All right, today on the table I have the DT10. And the LR308. You will see a price split of about $40, this being $40 cheaper. Now that's as of this morning, as of yesterday, this rifle is $20 cheaper. But the price on rifles, just firearms in general, is just dropping like crazy. Like if you're looking at buying a firearm, now's the time. It's getting to the point where we're almost afraid to order a firearm because we know if we wait like a day or two, there's a good chance it's going to be cheaper. That's amazing. <laughs> Alright, so the overall length, the LR308 is slightly shorter. The DT10 is slightly lighter. The DT10 has your standard AR15 looking receiver and forward assist. The LR308, they move the forward assist up and it's got a fatter upper and lower receiver. I prefer the DT10 over the LR308. Just because you can transition from uh, AR-15 to the DT-10 and you'll be right at home. All your controls are in the same place, looks the same. Uh, your receiver fit, a little bit of movement in the DT-10. The LR-308's got a little bit of movement as well. The LR-308 is tighter. The DT-10's got your standard style AR-15 front gas block that's pinned in. I really, really like that. Uh, it's also got a sling swivel. Your LR308 uses set screws and it's got a flat top gas block. Myself, I'm not a fan of that at all because I've had set screw and clamp style gas blocks break my heart before. A little bit of shifting, rifle goes down. DT10 comes with a P-Mag. Like that a lot. LR308, I believe this is a EPMS mag. Doesn't say on it, but I'm almost positive it's a EPMS mag, something they make themselves. Uh, your LR308, you get a straight trigger guard. It's still plenty big. Your DT10, it's curved right there. I do like the look of that a lot better. Your bolt release is more exposed because this is a skinnier upper receiver. Much easier to hit and or press. On your LR308, because the upper receiver is fatter, it almost kind of guards it. It still does protrude a little bit, so you can press that or slap it if you want, but it is a bit harder to perform. Six position stock looks identical to your AR15 stock. The LR308 has a DPMS stock on it. It's kind of got these cutouts for your fingers. Just because I'm familiar with an AR-15, I do prefer this one better. Your front hand guard. Uh, this uses your like your standard AR, I shouldn't say standard AR-15 hand guard, but your standard looking AR-15 hand guard. This is non-free floated. The DT-10, it, it's got a chunky hand guard. This thing's huge. I really wish I would have made this more narrow. It will look so much better and definitely improve the look of the firearm. Or did something in the back so it kind of blended more, kind of like what Armor Light does. They start out a little bit fatter and then they taper it in a little bit. Now I am utterly convinced that uh, 308 is more harmonically sensitive. So I want my handguard to be free floated. I had an AR-10, had a standard handguard, put on a free floated handguard, and the difference was extremely noticeable. An immediate accuracy improvement, uh, plus these barrels get pretty hot, so I like to have that little bit of space. Now I don't see those kind of same results on an AR-15. This AR will run with the best of them, with this handguard. I personally shot it that handguard's not free-floated. So I don't really think a 223 is as harmonically sensitive as a 308. Now there are a couple of factors in there that might be changing that. One, I've only taken a 308 
shot it with the standard handguard, then upgraded that exact rifle to a free-floated handguard. You know, maybe if I did that with an AR-15, I'd see an accuracy difference. The second thing is I changed my hold. When I was younger, I'd watch all those tactical videos and stuff, so I was convinced you had to hold your rifle up here. Now, since I've discovered that's a completely impractical hold, it's only good for paper targets at short range and for a short period of engagement time. If you've got any sort of engagement time or if the target's farther out, far superior hold. So not having my arm up there, that might also be making it so your standard handguard on your AR-15 isn't really affected. Because I always hold it right there, run it that way. Now, would I purchase the DT-10 over the LR-308? or the LR-308 over the DT-10. Myself, I would purchase the DT-10, assuming these are both equally reliable and consistent. Just because it's got your pinned in front gas block, free floated handguard, your standard AR-15 looking receiver, standard AR-15 looking stock, comes with a P-Mag, and right now it's cheaper. And this is a lighter firearm. But thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave in the comments below which one you would pick and why. And if you have experience with these two rifles, how the reliability is, what the accuracy looks like. I thought I'd elaborate a little bit more on my hold, just so I don't have to explain it in the comments. A couple of different reasons why I do a magwell hold. One on almost all rifles, it's the fulcrum point. Uh, this one's a little bit more far forward, uh, right about where the mag well would be. Yes, holding your rifle, pick something a little bit longer so it's better representative, way up here by the front sight, you can move through a short amount of targets really, really quickly. Like, say for example, you're facing off five left for dead zombies where you don't have to shoot them in the head. You just light up the body a bunch and they die. That would be an effective hold. Or for me, shooting three gun. If the stage is really, really short and the rifle's the first gun to pick, yes, I would use that hold. Say the rifle is the last firearm of the stage and you go through shotgun, pistol, then you get to rifle where you're already starting to feel some fatigue. Holding right here, definitely get a better sight picture and you're able to hold it longer. Up here, I'll let you know as soon as I start feeling fatigue. And I can start to feel it. And I'm starting to get a lot of front sight movement. It's starting to shake. <laughs> and I gotta put it down. Right here. I can hold this almost all day. Even though my arm's fatigued, I'm still quite steady. And it just balances. And typically when I'm hunting, when I drive, once in a while, I'll pop something up and I'll be able to snap shoot it real quick and then take it down so it's not a big deal. But typically what'll happen, is I'll kick something up and it'll like, say it takes off this way. I backtrack a little bit and then I start running this way to head it off and get in a decent shooting position. Because once it hears you run away from it, it'll just go a little bit and then stop and try to figure out what you're doing because you're not chasing it. And then it'll stay there. You run over here, you get yourself in a decent shooting position, and the next, I don't know, 30 seconds to three hours, it's going to pop out to try to figure out where you are, and that's when you take it down. So trying to sit there with your arm way out like this for longer than like 30 seconds doesn't really work. I can hold this, be in my ready position for as long as it takes. All the weight goes from here to your hand, down to your elbow, the rifle's balanced. But that's just my take on it. I mean, there's a billion different school of thoughts and different applications where each one works better.